Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Matt Barton and this is Matt Chat episode 365 featuring an interview uh, with John Van Canningham, aka JVC, the creator of some of my favorite role-playing games of all time as well as strategy games, namely Might and Magic and Heroes of Might and Magic. Uh, this is the first time uh, I've been able to get him onto the show after years and years of trying to get him on. Uh, finally, uh, my dream came true. Uh, and I got two segments with him. Uh, this first episode will be uh, talking about, and he'll actually be playing his uh, new game, Creature Quest. Uh, and then the ne uh, next segment, we'll be talking about his history at New World Computing and the Might and Magic series and, and all that good stuff. So a lot of great stuff coming up here on Matchet. Anyway, a lot of uh, stuff to cover here. So without further ado, here is John Van Canningham. So I'll go ahead and launch Creature Quest. And I don't know if you're getting sound at all. Yeah, just heard a ching ching. A little ching ching <laughs> for the intro logo there of our yeah. little warrior. And uh, I probably have it turned down in the game. I'll turn it up in a second as soon as it finishes loading here. But uh, uh, Creature Quest, also known as... Whoa! That's uh, okay, too loud. Nice and loud. <laughs> all right, I'll... <laughs> I'll turn it off for now so we can talk through it and put it back on when it's relevant. Because sometimes <clears throat> we've only done this through the Zoom a few times and uh, talking over the volume coming out of the same speakers is always a, uh, a, is a challenge. So, uh, But yeah, so Creature Quest, this has really been a, a cool endeavor for me to uh, make my first mobile game after so many, uh, uh, thanks Avi, so many PC games and whatnot over the years. And uh, it really reminded me of some of my earlier days with smaller teams, uh, the whole mobile world is uh, very different development uh, than current generation of games. But back then it was smaller teams, we could iterate faster, make a lot of changes. And that's exactly what it's like uh, been developing this on, uh, on mobile. Yeah, I've seen uh, some comments you had made about, it. I guess you kind of got disillusioned with this big sort of big budget games industry it just wasn't as much fun anymore, but the uh, mobile industry is yes. kind of bringing back the zest. Absolutely. I mean, you know, as much as I love the big games, it's uh, uh, it's a big, you know, multi-hundred person coordination ordeal and you can't change direction once it's going. And I don't know, uh, it has its fun. But uh, as soon as I started to get into this, I was like, oh, this is back my sweet spot, what I really love doing. Mm -hmm. So I said, all right. I had a million ideas for different mobile games and uh, I'm like, all right, I got to side on one. Let's, let's, let's focus on one. And of course a strategy RPG made the most sense uh, given my background and whatnot. And I really wanted to bring a lot of what I thought, you know, we did with heroes to the mobile world. But the big challenge of course is the user input so much different with touch and uh, swipe and whatnot as opposed to mouse and keyboard. And then of course the uh, user play sessions are, a minute here, five minutes there, you know, you're not planted in front of your computer for three, four hours like you would be with a <laughs> PC title. Only three or four. Only three, right, for one, <laughs> right, until you, until you have to take a minute break, right? <laughs> uh, so those were some challenges for design, but uh, I really took it as a, just a fun challenge, and I thought, well, why not? And especially since what really uh, encouraged me was the sheer number of users you had in the mobile world. It's really, uh, yeah. it's pretty phenomenal. Remember years ago, people used to ask me, you know, what's your favorite platform? Was it Apple? Was it PC? Was it XYZ? Yeah, 3D, <laughs> whatever. I was like, you know, I love making games. Just tell me where the gamers are and I'll make a game for that machine that they all have. And my gosh, nowadays with uh, smartphones and tablets, it's, the numbers are sh absolutely amazing. So I was like, all right, I got to try making games for uh, that platform. I mean, there's a lot of uh, users for it, but you know, I, somebody you know, somebody who's got design as well as a lot of publishing uh, experience. You know, how, how do you? There's so many other mobile games and apps out there. I mean, how do you sort of rise above all that uh, competition? I guess. Well, you know, I looked at the at the market and I saw what the top uh, games were, and I saw a pretty big divide in terms of the quality and depth levels of the majority of the stuff that you know, kind of comes out 
uh, regularly, you know, lower budget freebie games and then the higher quality stuff. And I, and I was like, I don't think I'd have a problem creating a higher quality game to compete. And like you said, the biggest challenge is the discoverability, you know, the, how do people find it? But I had bigger challenges making PC and, you know, other games throughout the years of, of not just people finding out about it, but everything else. But now, you know, you can be walking anywhere in the world, one click away and you can download the game and start playing. That removes a lot of barriers and obstacles to actually get started. And plus they're free, which I knew would be the way of gaming uh, going in the future uh, when you're talking to such a large audience. And it's free to try it. See if you get addicted. And uh, much different uh, hurdle than uh, actually having to get someone to go to Best Buy and spend $60. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, looking that's back, all. you know, how did, how did that ever happen? You know? I know. How did I ever get anyone to go to a store, spend $60, come home, go through all those install, update, my machine doesn't work problems, you know. <laughs> so, it's amazing people played it all. But uh, uh, so, you know, so this is so smooth and so easy to get into. It just really made a lot of sense. So uh, I thought, all right. Yeah, so we're looking at the title screen here, I guess. Let's look at the yeah, so this is like our home screen. Home screen. And, and after you load into the games, it comes up. This one's pretty busy because I've unlocked everything and I got, uh, you know, I've been playing for hundreds of hours on this account. Uh, but basically, it's a creature collectible game. So it's all about finding all these fantasy creatures, which I, you know, some of my favorites from all the heroes and the Might Magic games uh, and interpretations of that. You collect them and you make teams of them and you go on quests. And that's the, you know, big emphasis of the game. So <clears throat> along the bottom, there's some similar things that some other games in this category have, like I'll press on the creature collection. Uh, screen. So this is where it shows all of our stuff we've collected and all the creatures and uh, all the levels we've got them up to and whatnot. How many different uh, creatures are in this game now? I think I yeah, saw we have a big 500. number. 500. Yeah, 500 creatures and you can level them all and give them abilities and it's pretty cool. Um, I'll get into that in a second. Uh, of course there's all sorts of treasure to find items. You wouldn't be an RPG with all sorts of tons and tons of stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> We have our, of course, our diamond shop, which is our paid currency, um, uh, where you can buy the diamonds if you want to. You don't have to. You can pretty much play this game without spending any money. Uh, it's really about convenience and getting things faster or, uh, you know, moving along to your style of play. Uh, there's stuff to spend diamonds on to make the game uh, more interesting or more deep. Then here we have what we call our summon screen. This is how most players would get new creatures. So you either save up diamonds from playing or buy them, or you collect these tickets or these idols from quests. And uh, I'll go ahead and turn the sound up a little here. Hopefully it's not too loud. And uh, we'll go ahead and in here and uh, we'll summon a new creature. So we'll have saved up 90 diamonds. And we'll go into the screen and bring the gong. three yeah. stars and uh, has all these stats to him. But uh, I'll turn the sound back straight out there. of the bayou there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's how you get new creatures. It's kind of a, a random thing. And we have different weekends where uh, certain types of creatures are more likely to drop from the summoning. Uh, there's the social tab here where you can join guilds and, you know, friends lists and Facebook mm -hmm. and uh, all the kind of stuff you'd expect from a, a modern complete feature complete mobile game but i'll go back to the the home screen and at the bottom here I, I have my current team this is the team of creatures i've been just playing recently these five guys along the bottom you can scroll to new teams i don't have any teams queued up on this one uh but i can take a look at any of the creatures uh i'll take a quick look at this phoenix he's got a whole bunch of oh, stats nice. uh he has some real beautiful animation uh you can do some funny stuff like um go into this viewer and then just tap on them and see some of their animation. Really kind of fun. Stuff out of the oh, white bench. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you can see some of the art, you know. And then we also have, you know, some uh, 
really fun characters that are uh, some of the smaller creatures I'll get to here. Older kind of crocodiles and some fun stuff. I mean, we just went crazy with all the different creatures in the game. Uh, you know, we have all these fun little fun creatures. You know, everything from ladybugs to there's the swamp thing. Yeah, some little sprites. Uh, I could go on. I can go on. It's one of your trademarks going way back, right? All the really diverse all creatures. Yeah, tons of diverse creatures. Plus, have some uh, rats in there somewhere, right? Oh yeah, we got a rat. <laughs> that's so that's oh, here we got a kitten maid. She's hysterical. Uh, yeah, you gotta have a kitten maid. Right? Yeah, you gotta have. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Where is a rat? I must have one here somewhere. Just so uh, you made me think of it. Oh, I might have. I might have deleted him. <laughs> well, I traded him in. Oh, maybe yeah, we'll I see. want a whole team of rats. It's my dream. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty funny looking. <clears throat> So, um, uh, let me go to the main part of the game in terms of how to play, and uh, we can go back to some of the creature uh, uh, leveling and all that stuff. So, back at our home screen, there are, right now we have three major modes on how you play this game. The most interesting one, which is the heroes-related one, is the questing system. So, right in the center there, we have a banner that says quest with the exclamation. You just tap on that, and this takes us to our list of today's quests. So, because this is a live service and a live game, we constantly cycle in new things. So this is this list of all these different little mini stories, kind of like each adventure in Heroes. Each Mind one has its over own. magic. <laughs> <laughs> right. Battle no, of the uh, Bards. Yeah, they all have this little fun and kind of comical story to them and, uh, and whatnot. So let's pick the first one here, Giant Adventure. And uh, you can set the difficulty rating. Uh, all right, well. We'll put it on tough here because I got a I got a good team. Was that four um, or five different difficulty levels to? Yep. Shoot? Yeah, and you have to start off lower. on the lower one, and after you beat it, then you can go up. And of course, the treasure gets better and better oh. as you go up in difficulty, uh, which is kind of cool. So we'll do king mode here. We'll see if we survive. So this is the part that I think is the most innovative for one of these creature collecting games: is our questing system. And uh, uh, so this kind of looks like an old heroes map. It's kind of it's all grayed out. We haven't explored it yet, but instead of moving a a hero with an army around, uh, we we basically have our team ready to go. And what I do is I tap on these energy icons, which reveals part of the map. Hmm. And then underneath, you'll find treasure. So you just tap on that with your finger as well. So something about tickets, five tickets. Uh. Oh yeah, I got some treasure there. And now we found this little kitten mage who okay, he, he has a little. Something he wants to ask us, uh, we'll be hungry today. <laughs> so then he lets us continue adventuring, and we'll keep picking up treasure, some, some experience, some gold. We get sent by this cannon over to here. Now there's balloon. So there's yeah, lots of little... definitely reminded me of uh, the Heroes games. This Yes. So now you can see, you know, you can zoom in and out with pinching and, you know, your wow. standard iPhone, iPad stuff. And... Now we get to a creature who's blocking the way, which is very similar to what we had in Heroes. As you started to adventure a map, there'd be creature blocking the way. So now we say, all right, uh, these uh, stable chicken cross the skies. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now we have our team ready, and we're going to go to combat. And combat part of this game, it's completely turn-based RPG, and this will remind you some of the early Might and Magics. So we have our team of five guys uh, along the bottom of the screen. And as it comes up here, uh, so you can see our five characters and they each have a basic ability, which I'll press and hold the little uh, uh, one of them right here and mystic attack. And uh, uh, this one is a warlock attack and so on that are tied to each creature. And then at the bottom row, every creature has a unique special ability like this wizard. I'll press and hold it. Uh, he has chain lightning, of course, because that's what wizards have in my games. <laughs> right. And uh, every creature has a unique special ability. Now, across the middle on the top of the screen is all the bad guys on this wave. So we got three creatures here, their hit point bar, and the number represents how many turns until they get to act. Oh, so okay. Completely turn-based uh, RPG. So uh, I'll go ahead and tap on a couple of my guys and have them do their attacks. And you can see it counting down and them attacking me back, and my healer here got hit pretty hard. Are you telling them which which monsters to attack or how, how does that work? 
Uh, they have their own logic, or you can go ahead and tap a creature like I just did and say, okay, I want everyone to focus on that one. Okay. So uh, I just did that, and we'll slide across here, and we got uh, the chicken went down. I got some treasure there. We'll target this guy here, and uh, we'll go off on that. And Now let's see. Uh, my Lich's special ability has powered up, so we'll go ahead and target the Wyvern, and I'll use the Lich's superpower ability, and uh, that – Got him done pretty quick there. So uh, there's a whole uh, really detailed combat system with pros and cons from the different color creatures, what abilities work against which. The creatures have uh, modifications that help each other depending on how you format your team. There's this whole system with these combo dots that can get very detailed uh, that charges up your mana and gives you bonus attacks. Uh, and... But you, if you just want to, you can just swipe your finger across the screen and watch things explode as well. <laughs> there are, uh, are there always two waves, or does that fluctuate? That fluctuates. So this is like the, a beginner map that's meant to go by, you know, be a quick uh, uh, run through. So there's two waves, but there's three, four, five, seven, and you got to obviously survive through it all. So we won the battle. We get some treasure, and then we go back out to the uh, uh, adventure part of the map. We're now, you know. This guy has come up and said, oh, how did you find me? And did you, is it just my imagination, or did you lose one of your characters back there? In the, in the... Yeah, he went down. But <laughs> is he after, down for good? Or is there no, a way to... after each battle, they come back. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, and uh, so we continue on exploring and talking with characters, and uh, there's little stories you have to complete. There's another guy we got to fight. And eventually you'll get through the whole map, and you'll complete the quest, which you know uh, down here is the a little synopsis of what we're trying to do. Uh, and it's pretty pretty straightforward. This is meant to be like a 15-minute quest uh, that you run through the map and you pick everything up. And once you've completed the quest, you get the end rewards, and uh, uh, you can continue on to other quests or play it again at a harder difficulty level and, uh, and so on. But it's really been a lot of fun. So we have dozens of these maps, and... They are redone multiple times, depending on how you answer questions, or which way you go, and very similar to how we did Heroes and uh, uh, how you gain treasure and how you level up your guys, which I'll show you in a second. So we'll go back out here, and uh, we'll go to our creature screen, and let's say we, um, we have a guy here. Let me go down to one of them. Uh, oh, let's do a panda today. <laughs> All right, so we have this yeah. <laughs> we have this panda, and uh, he's level 10 of 45. Uh, some of the guys you find are uh, uh, less. And we press the add experience, and this is how we power make our characters more powerful. So if you notice during the game, we found these colored gems, and the color has to match their color uh, hmm. in order to be used on that creature. So you know, obviously the white gems with the white creatures the fire gems of the fire creatures and all we do is tap on a few gems and it piles it in here and uh, let's get him all the way up to 45 here and then we'll consume and it's like great and it does this little level up animations as uh you know we're leveling them all the way to 45 i'll skip so, so you don't have to watch it all and now once you've maxed it out you now have to evolve the creature to make him into this next great thing. So we press evolve, and unfortunately I'm missing uh, some of these little white crystals here, white fragments, in order to evolve him. So let me have to go back out to a different character <laughs> and find one that uh, will be easier to... Uh, yeah. oh, here, let's do a jackalope. This guy's pretty funny. It sounds like you have a mix of uh, sort of cutesy characters and sort of bad badass looking monsters in there and oh yeah it's there's something for everyone and they all have kind of neat powers to them and uh let's see if we can get him to 15 there we go we'll <clears throat> level him to 15 my kitten apprentice here and there we go now the evolves it up so i have three of these uh <clears throat> these yellow fragments that i had collected during questing so i'll go ahead and press evolve and now he goes through this little transformation and now it's a little more fierce looking. Nice. <laughs> if a kitten mage could be fierce looking. Uh. <laughs> so now he's a kitten conjurer and his level can go to 30 and his stats get more powerful and his ability gets more, more stuff that it does. And 
goes on and on and on. Um, if you level them up to 30, then you could evolve them again, right? That's right. That's exactly right. And the stars right there where it says a small three stars. So he's a two of three. So if you evolved him again, he'd be a three of three. Uh, and that would, you know, put him at its max evolution. Uh, <laughs> then we have all this customized where you can uh, customize their attacks. You can customize their combo. You can do this awakening system, which is interesting is where you, uh, unlock all these extra bonus abilities with duplicate creatures. So if you find a duplicate, you can use it to unlock some of these secret abilities. Uh, so there's tons and tons of, you know, deep strategy and cool creatures to collect, and they all have different abilities that work different differently together. So uh, a lot of the harder quests, you need different types of teams and different types of abilities in order to get through them. So that's the, the big main loop in the game. Uh, now there's a couple other modes I'll mention quickly. Um, we have our battle tower on the right here, which is simply a progressively more difficult uh, battles that you go up and up and they have different rewards and different things to farm. So say you only had five minutes to play and you want to do a battle, you come to this screen. And then lastly is our kind of our uh, uh, more social uh, and competitive uh, mode of play. Uh, oh, we just got a present on our throne there. Uh, anyway, is our dungeon challenge. I'll press that. And this is where you play against other players. Okay, so, yeah, I knew there's a PvP element in here. Yeah, so every week there's a new uh, challenge. And the first thing you have to do is make a dungeon. So I'll press make, make a dungeon here. And if you remember, we had like the three waves uh, or two waves in that battle. Uh, we start off with a three-wave dungeon, and I have it already pre-filled here. But, uh, you know, I could pick a guy and say, well, I don't like him here. He's not powerful enough. I'll go back to my inventory and I'll put this guy in instead. Uh, and uh, so I can lay it out any way I want and put all my creatures in and get it ready. And then I activate it. And once I activate it, it goes up onto the server and now all the other players can, uh, uh, my light went off, uh, can attack you and whatnot. So we have a leaderboard <clears throat> so all week long, people battle each other up and down. So you attack their dungeon. If you win, you get points. They go up, you could, you know, up, down, etc. cetera. Uh, they come back and attack you. And at the end of the week, uh, we have a whole ton of rewards based on how far you've gotten and also what rank you achieved. So this week, the top people will get one of these giant uh, cobras with all these diamonds. And, and depending on how you placed is what you get at the end of the week. <laughs> And then we have a guild one as well. So you and your 10 friends, uh, you go out and beat up people as well and accumulate a score. And uh, depending on where you place, your guild will get all those payouts. Uh, so here, my guild this last week uh, that just ended, we finished 26 to 50. So we got those rewards. So quite so a bit here for expert players, I guess. Players oh, yeah. Really yeah I mean, want to take it to the next level. Absolutely. I mean, it has just, if you want to be a solo player and quest and collect fun creatures and just enjoy yourself, it has endless hours of that, which we really wanted to capture. But if you want to, you know, compete with your friends and, and go for all the, you know, challenges back and forth with other players, it has that too. Uh, and that just, stuff just goes on and on and on. Uh, we have a news feed where we constantly tell you what's going on and uh, it links to websites and facts and videos and stuff like that. Uh, we offer specials every once in a while uh, that give you things if you want to spend your diamonds. Uh, you click on the throne here and we got a mail system where you get your rewards in the mail, you get presents, so I just click on them. Um, everything in the game we designed to play on a phone with one hand, so it's very... Oh, it, I like that idea. Yeah. yeah, very easy to swipe your thumb across things and you're on a bus, you're sitting in front of the TV, whatever. Driving your car, you could be playing this. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if I'd <laughs> I could have done that. Uh, we have daily missions, and then there's a whole ton of achievements, too, that uh, is a great way to get high-level items and, and all sorts of stuff that you need to power up your creatures. Um, how, many so, teams, yeah, how many teams can you have? Um, I think we allow seven, five or seven teams. Uh, yeah, we have seven teams, and we have ways for you to add more if you want. But it's pretty simple to make new ones and swap people in and out. Uh, and in right before you go into battle, you could switch a team. If you go, oh, 
this battle looks like there's a lot more green creatures, so I want to bring my uh, uh, you know fire creatures because that's the you know the rock one that paper does the scissors best. kind of thing. Right? Exactly, exactly. It's based on the color system uh, as well as oh, there's a lot of stunners or damage dealers or buffers or debuffers, and you want to have the counter uh, type creatures to fight against them, uh, especially on the more harder uh, difficulty levels. Then it gets real critical your combat choices and uh, which guy you use in what order and um, some really neat high level, you know, strategy. If you want to get into that, uh, some players treat it like old school RPGs where they're like, ah, I'm just going to level up more and then I'll just slaughter through them. <laughs> is there emphasis that's... on trading things with other players? <laughs> no, there is no trading system with other players, but uh, you can compete together and then we're going to be having a uh, send friends uh, presence and stuff like that as well. Uh, trading is an interesting concept that uh, creates some other uh, longer term difficulties that we didn't want to open that box yet. Hmm. Uh, kind of learned it in the MMO world. The moment you open trading, you get a lot of gold farmers and hacked accounts and because uh, uh, people break into people's account and trade everything away and, you know, <laughs> best to avoid that <laughs> yeah at least for now uh and when you're talking about a much larger audience with a casual uh more casual mobile game uh we didn't want to try to deal with that craziness to start with uh but if it's something players start asking for then we'll start to start to address it um all right so i, I got a question here for you yeah <laughs> uh so i see a lot of the uh sort of heroes of light and magic sort of vibe going yeah here. Yes, that seems pretty clear to me uh, but, but for you you know would you say this is more uh, something that would appeal to those sort of heroes people nostalgic for heroes or are you more uh, trying to reach a new audience with this uh i think it's both i mean i would love the nostalgic heroes peoples to to try it and uh and see what they think i i don't it never meant to be a replacement or a sequel to the hero series uh but i wanted to bring some of the play and mechanics and whatnot that made heroes fun to a mobile game uh so i would just hope they try it and, and give it a shot for what it is as opposed to oh this is the next heroes game no it's not the next <laughs> heroes game. <laughs> uh and, if, and like you're right there's a huge audience that have never heard about heroes or any of these play type uh mechanics and, and people that are like fascinated with a pokemon go for example do you think that crowd might uh, oh yeah Gravitate Pokemon over. Go, or any of the collectible RPG games that have been around for a while. And, uh, and ironically, most of them have come from the East. And there's been very few actually made in the West with a Western art style and uh, more of a Western game mentality in terms of ease and leveling and combat mechanics. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that was the goal. We're going to see how it goes, but we've been in soft launch for a while with uh, uh, a few small countries and the response has really been terrific, but it, uh, it's really given us a chance to iterate and polish. And there are things people like that we didn't expect. And uh, there are lots of things that things you know, people like that you didn't expect. Oh my gosh. They like just playing for hours on end. You know, we initially made it that, you know, five, 10 minutes was a good play window, but we're monitoring the other cool thing about mobile games is we can see what everyone's doing, how many minutes you played on the screen and uh, how many times you did certain things. And, uh, and the play sessions are just amazing. People are playing for hours like a PC game. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect that. Uh, but I was pleasantly surprised because that means they really like the game and uh, they can't wait to play more. That's what's the one thing I was thinking about was, especially with an iPad, Maybe that would even be more – you could even have longer gameplay sessions with that because, you, hey, you don't have to stop playing to go to the bathroom. You just take it with right. you. Yeah, <laughs> and, you know, people on their phones playing games everywhere. So right. uh, I think the turn-based game made so much sense for this first product uh, because of that. And, uh, uh, yeah, lots you of little things. You can't go wrong with turn-based. Yeah, I know, <laughs> especially with my history, right? I mean, yeah. There was a period where people wanted me to – take heroes to real time and i was like you know we had a design for it and i called it off i was like no heroes is heroes we're going to keep it that way <laughs> i got some questions oh, let's see i think i had oh yeah one one last thing about this this uh, creature quest game i wanted to ask sure 
I think you've kind of already shown this, actually. Uh, but I know it's a huge thing with you, uh, sort of your design philosophy, is you really uh, – uh, you want players to be able to play the way they want to, and you don't want yes. like designers making – you know, telling them how they should play, basically. So how do you uh, – how is that reflected here? So uh, I think a lot of it has to do with uh, the kind of the difference between strategy and RPGs is what we struggled with with Heroes. So a true strategy game, you have to be really good at it to advance. Uh, an RPG, you can kind of, well, I can't quite go over there yet because I'm not that good, so I'm going to stay over here and level up some more, and eventually I can out-level – whatever obstacles are in my way. Uh, we've definitely maintained that. A really smart strategy player can go a lot further sooner, but your classic RPG person can just go, you know what, I'll do this quest a couple times and level up a few more times before I take on the more difficult uh, uh, tasks. That works fine too. Uh, if you don't ever want to play PvP, you don't have to. It's perfectly fine. If all you want to do is PvP, we have everything you need <laughs> to do that. Uh, if you want to put money in, there's tons of ways to get cool stuff quicker. If you don't want to put money in, you can play for years and, and totally enjoy yourself. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully they won't do that though. <laughs> well, I think that's, I, you know, I've come to accept that's kind of the nature of mobile games and I don't mind because it creates a community. And uh, as long as enough, you know, people uh, of the overall players spend enough to keep this going, we can, keep adding to the game and make the next one, then I'm happy. I mean, I, it's not about squeezing every dime out of everyone to me. It's If they're having a good time, they'll try the next game. And maybe at some point they'll like something enough to put money in. But if not, I'm just glad I was able to give them a fun experience. Uh, uh, I think that's part of the thing about being a, a game maker for so many years. That's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was really an honor to have JVC on the show after all these years. And I really want to thank uh, Lars. Uh, Lars uh, helped me set up, get in contact uh, with JVC, as well as uh, Tim Lang, uh, another New World Computing uh, guy that I'll be interviewing in the next few weeks. Uh, so anyway, thank you very much, Lars, uh, for setting that up. Really appreciate it. As always, I want to thank you very, 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 very much for your support of this show. You're keeping these episodes coming. Uh, you can uh, help the show either by uh, signing up to be a Patreon, or as I like to say, a Ratcheon. Uh, there's a link in the show notes for that. And all I ask is a buck an episode, you know, three or four bucks a month, uh, and that keeps these shows going. Uh, so thank you very much. Also appreciate it very much uh, when you uh, help me spread the word about the show. I don't have a marketing team here. There's no... Uh, advertisements uh, for Matt Chat, anything like that. It's all word of mouth, uh, people like you letting your uh, like-minded friends know. If you have friends that are big into Might and Magic or uh, Creature, <laughs> you think would be interested in Creature Quest, uh, please feel free to send the uh, link to the video to them. I'll let them know about the show. I really appreciate it, so thank you very much. All right, what about the news from the Matt Cave? <laughs> some really great news here. Matt Chat reporter Stig Johansson on the scene again. Uh, the first one was a uh, for a new game in the Vampire the Masquerade universe. Uh, this is a new game set in that universe. It's in the works, being developed by Cyanide Studio. Uh, apparently these guys did some games called Styx, Master of Shadows, as well as a game called Blood Bowl. Now I have to admit I'm not familiar with either one of those games, uh, but anyway it looks like they got some neat ideas uh, for this one. Uh, you actually get to be a werewolf in this game, which is uh, pretty cool. I like uh, werewolves, so uh, we'll keep an eye on this and see what uh, see what new developments. Apparently, I think February 1st they're going to release some more information, so uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, and then also, uh, Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire has been announced. Uh, they've already made their $1.1 million goal. You know, I'm sure they had no problem. I was uh, fully predicting that. Uh, they're already up to the first stretch goal, uh, plenty of uh, room to go. Uh, in this one, you get to voyage by land and sea across the myriad, myriad of islands called Deadfire. Uh, the people of Deadfire will have lives of their own, so they've got jobs to do, appointments to keep, and so on. Uh, in addition to that, there's dynamic weather. I thought that was kind of cool. Immersive dynamic weather. Apparently, they're going to do some pretty cool uh, effects with the 
uh, the uh, weather in this one. Uh, and just a bit of a side note, I was uh, I noted that a, a Guido Hinkle uh, from the oh, what was the name of the, the Divin Divinity Original Sin uh, developer apparently he's pretty upset that uh, Josh Sawyer uh, named the game uh, Dead Fire uh, because uh, uh, Hinkle's game he had a Kickstarter came out come out back in 2013 called Death Fire. Uh, so I noticed a little bit of a kerfuffle between those two. I hope they get it sorted out. Uh, but I'm curious to know what you think. Uh, anyway, that's really exciting. I hope you will pledge to that. And it's not on Kickstarter. It's on Fig. Uh, I'll post a link to it on the show uh, notes so you can find that. <clears throat> and then finally, uh, my Siege of Dragon Spear uh, Collector's Edition uh, arrived. Uh, I'm really, really impressed with this production. I mean, the production values are really through the roof. They've really done justice to this collector's edition. Uh, there's a book here with a little uh, really heavy coin, a medallion, I guess you'd call that. Uh, really awesome. Uh, this book is neat. I guess this is kind of a design, uh, a little bit of a, looks like some lore from the show. I haven't really <laughs> had a chance to dive into this yet, but uh, anyway, that's pretty slick. Of course, we have the, uh, what is this, a cloth, is that cloth map or yeah, big old cloth map here. Really nice quality. Wow. Yeah, this is uh, really getting me excited about the game again. I need to go back and, uh, and play it again. Uh, we have a spiral bound adventurer's guide. Wow, full color. Wow, this is just incredible. Uh, you know, I can remember when so, um, you know, JVC's games would come with all this kind of stuff and it wasn't even considered a collector's edition, right? It was just, that's, <laughs> that's how cool it was back then. Uh, then we got a little bag of, uh, of dice here. Wow. Looks like they got some custom uh, Siege of Dragon Spear dice, a full set, looks like. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> you know, I'd have been satisfied just with the dice. And, of course, we've got the, uh, the disc here. And, oh, what's this? Uh, thank you for purchasing Siege of Dragon Spear and supporting our continuing development of the Baldur's Gate series, Cam and Trent. Uh, well, that's pretty cool. Uh, so congratulations, uh, Cam and Trent. I'm, I'm very happy uh, with this, and I hope uh, you'll continue to make games set in the Baldur's Gate universe. Uh, oh, well, there's one other thing, too. I'm actually wearing the... Uh, I think I got caught up in my microphone here, but they, there's a necklace. There we go. Uh, there's a little necklace that came with it, too. So that's all pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. All right, uh, what about that ale of the week? Uh, let's see, this week I've uh, got, oh, this is uh, apparently a new series from New Belgium. Uh, those guys are out of, uh, where are those, out of, uh, let's see, Fort Collins, Colorado. And you've probably seen the New Belgium. I think they do Fat Tire, a couple other ones. But anyway, this uh, label really caught my eye. It's kind of a skeletal voodoo ranger uh, IPA. And they got this uh, in an IPA. I think there's also an imperial version of this. Uh, with a higher alcohol content, but holy cow, I mean, this one is uh, 7%, uh, so I don't know, you probably don't want to go much above that unless you're feeling really crazy. Uh, I think the Imperial was like, maybe as much as 10%, so I went with this one instead. Let's see, bursting with tropical aromas and juicy fruit flavors from Mosaic and Amarillo hops, uh, this golden IPA is perfectly bitter with a refreshing, sublime taste. Uh, anyway, what caught my eye was this awesome uh, label on here. I was uh, hoping they would go into a little bit of the story about why they chose that image. Uh, but anyway, it looks pretty cool, so let's get this open and see what it's all about. All right, so I got some of this Voodoo Ranger IPA, uh, New Belgium Ale here in the rather excellent drinking horn. Go ahead and fill her up there. Nice, uh, nice bit of uh, foam on their head, I guess they call that. Ah, you know, it smells exactly like you would expect an IPA to smell. You definitely smell the hops in there, a bit of a citrusy aroma. They mentioned that they had some spices in this. Uh, you know, nothing's really standing out spice-wise. I don't know if they added a little bit of uh, anise to this, maybe, or what do they like to put cinnamon or maybe some cardamom in it sometimes. Uh, not really sure, uh, but anyway, it smells really nice. Uh, so let's give it a taste. It's definitely a little bit on the bitter side, but a kind of a sweet finish on that as uh, well. I like the uh, thickness of it. It's kind of creamy. Uh, it's very uh, flavorful. Uh, it's got a rather high, you know, 7% alcohol. You'd think that would sort of stand out, but 
Uh, again, you don't really taste in the alcohol or, you know, I know fumes coming off of this is always a good sign. Uh, actually, quite, quite nice. I like this. I'll try it again here. And just a, a very uh, solid choice here. Uh, I think I've kind of been on an IPA streak here lately. I've been trying a lot of different uh, IPAs. Uh, I'm not sure I like this one quite as much as I did the one from the uh, previous episode, but it's definitely on up there. I'll tell you what, I'll give it one more uh, taste here. Now this one's it's definitely nice. You get some sort of hoppiness there, a little bit of bitterness, maybe a little bit of a, uh, oh, what is that flavor? Maybe a little bit of a malt uh, flavor there. Uh, anyway, it's it's all really, really good. Uh, I don't know if it really sort of rises to the 5 out of 5, uh, but it's definitely a solid 4 out of 5 drinking horns. Uh, I think I might try their Imperial after this just to see if it tastes different than this. Uh, but anyway, very solid choice, and you should be able to find this uh, Voodoo Ranger IPA. Uh, <laughs> Uh, definitely one of the coolest labels. So a uh, four out of five on the Voodoo Ranger. All right, so let's wrap this up with a quotation. And I was, uh, I've been watching that show Black Sails, a sort of pirate uh, show on stars. And uh, the Captain Flint had a quote on there. I just really like this quote. So I wanted to put it here and uh, see if you like it too. It goes something like this. And he's, he's been talking to this, uh, I was a quartermaster named Billy. Uh, so anyway, this is what Captain Flint tells Billy. There's always doubt, Billy. No sane man would deny that. No good captain would acknowledge it. Isn't that awesome? See you guys next week. Hello, uh, can we have your liver?